We are polluting the air and water. Slowly but surely we're destroying nature. We all know there is a problem. What is not always clear is what we can do about this problem. This is the story of my family and what we've tried to do about it. In 1992, our life changed. First, our son Ian was born, followed two years later by our daughter Claire. As I learned more about the destruction of our natural world, I began to worry that one day my kids would ask me what I had tried to do about these problems. So we resolved to do what we could. I began reading about solar panels, renewable energy sources, and natural living. This is the Toronto Healthy House. This was the house that was a major turning point for Lee and I in our search uh, to create a solar powered house. So we came and toured the house and, and found some amazing features. First of all, at the lower level, you can see the gray panels. Those are solar uh, water heater panels. They take the energy from the sun and bring it into the house and provide heated water to warm the insides of the house. Up above, you can see the darker panels are uh, photovoltaic solar panels. These convert sunlight into electricity and provide uh, electrical power to the house, but also are able to uh, transmit the electricity into the general grid around the neighborhood. We went to see the Healthy House, the Toronto Healthy House, and I think that was the first time that I decided that he wasn't crazy, that this is actually, you could actually do this. We're looking at the, the north wall from the inside now. We've got uh, a stucco wall here, but inside the stucco is the straw bales that we were talking about. This is actually called a, a truth window. Uh, when you build with straw bales, typically um, people leave a little opening to show other people that you've actually got straw inside the walls because some people, you know, just see a stucco wall and they wouldn't know that there's uh, straw inside. With straw bale, what you do is you take the wire mesh and you put it on each side of the straw bale when you're building it. And then what you do is you actually take long uh, needles and you sew twine uh, through each side of the, of the wire and that compresses the, the straw bales together and uh, creates a, a really strong wall. The straw is an incredible material. It's great to build with and it provides amazing insulation values. Basically those walls are breathing walls so the air is actually constantly refreshed just because the uh, you know the air changes in the house so it's not a house that's sealed up. One of the things that was key in the design of the house was the putting of the windows on the south side to collect the sun's energy. We've got the windows going up two levels which doubles the amount of energy we collect in terms of heat coming into the house. And then just above the windows you can see the solar panels, the photovoltaic panels that collect sunlight and convert it to electricity. Okay, we're here on the southwest side of the house. We've got a great windy sunny day. You can see here that the wind turbine is going pretty good. That's generating electricity that we're taking into the house and powering some of the house. Wind turbines are amazing because they go day and night so they complement the solar panels that we talked about earlier. So what we have here is up at the top you can see this white cable where the wind turbines DC current comes into a charge controller and uh, this then is piped into the inverter to convert it to AC. And then on the other side here we have this red cable. This comes down from the photovoltaic panels on the roof into the inverter system and again 
that DC current is converted into AC. And then what happens is we've got two different things. We've got the ability to pump it into the grid, into the meter that we saw running backwards earlier. And we've also got the uh, electrical panel here, which is standard in any house. And here we can pipe the electrical energy into our own home if we want it. The roof is designed to actually hold about eight inches of soil. Um, on top of the black membrane that you see here, the soil will have uh, natural grasses planted in it. And that uh, structure is called a green roof. And that provides a number of benefits to us. One of them is that uh, in the summertime, the soil and grass will actually keep the house much cooler. In fact, 30 or 40 percent cooler. When the sun hits the vegetation, it actually hits the soil and then the soil starts to transpire and it's much like our own skin you know when we transpire we actually uh, we discharge a lot of heat and therefore cool ourselves down with uh, transpiration so so the same thing with the uh, with the green roof we're looking at uh, the concrete floor the concrete floor really is the source of of storing all of our heat what happens is the sunlight comes into the house uh, hits the floor the thick concrete uh, structure absorbs that heat and then stores it in the in the mass so what happens is overnight or, or during the day when we need that heat it slowly is released so that's our main heating source of course there are times in in winter when we do not have any sunlight we all know that like it's right around sort of you know the holiday times and uh, in, in the first part of January it's cold and dark so then you say well you're gonna heat your house with sunlight good luck so what do you do then with those times where you don't get any sunlight? Then, of course, we have an in-flooring, in-floor heating system. And this is actually our, what, what in a conventional house would be called a furnace. So most furnaces are about this big and burn fossil fuels. What this does is it uses a little bit of electricity to warm up the water, and it pipes that through these pipes into the floors when we need to boost the heat in the house. We're in the uh, middle of the house. This is where we've uh, put the kitchen area. Um, when we were going to purchase appliances for the kitchen, one of the key things was to find the most efficient appliances we could because obviously if we're collecting energy from the sun and the wind, there's limited amounts that we can generate. So by choosing efficient appliances, we, we reduce the amount of panels and turbines we need. You know, it's funny, I always like to think, why is it that we in the West, when we're born, we immediately, immediately are plugged in? And from the moment we're born until the moment we die, we're plugged in, you know, as where the rest of the world is not that way, right? So how do we, how do we relearn that kind of comfort to allow, you know, natural ways to, to, make, us, to make us comfortable? And it's, it's a learning curve. But it's all out there. It's all been figured out. It's all been done before. You know, we're kind of basic, basically relearning all these kinds of methods. It's growing. It's a growing industry. Our company's growing. Not quickly. Not as quickly as it should be due to the uh, imbalances in, in, uh, in energy funding. Uh, nuclear and, and oil have incredible amounts of tax money thrown up for research and whatnot, um, we don't get a penny. So, but as our energy cost goes up and our worry about the uh, environment goes up and, and we adopt sort of, you know, the Kyoto Protocol and so on, uh, you know, then all these things become more and more relevant and become real. I really like to talk in terms of sort of the loop, you know, that it's affordable, it's economical, but also it's better for the environment as well, so that it's like a, a package is sort of win-win in, in so many ways. We've come a long way towards achieving our dreams. Living naturally gives us hope that our children will have a bright future. We're still learning and there is lots of work still to be done. The hardest part is taking the first step. Thank you.